Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in five minutes or less. Today, we kick off with a really interesting report from consulting firm McKinsey, which argues that generative AI could add up to $4.4 trillion a year to the global economy. And by the way, the minimum that they think it will add is $2.6 trillion. Their new trend report is called the Economic Potential of Generative AI. And beyond just that top-level economic impact figure, they also dig into just how much of the current work activity that people are engaged in can be automated away by AI. In fact, this McKinsey study thinks that AI could automate about 60 to 70% of what we spend our time on. Now, McKinsey takes the optimistic view that this doesn't mean job loss, but means that people's time will be able to be used for more advanced purposes and more creation. That's part of where they see these trillions of dollars of new economic value coming from. Overall, they think this could add 0.2 to 3.3 percentage points annually to productivity growth, which would be a productivity boom the likes of which we have not seen for many, many decades. To put together the report, McKinsey analysts looked at 850 occupations as well as 2,100 detailed work activities across 47 countries that they say represent more than 80% of the global workforce. Now, given that type of wide-ranging potential impact, it's no surprise that AI is in the regulatory and policy hot seat. In the U.S., a new bill has been introduced that would hold AI companies accountable if their tools were used for harmful content. Specifically, it would say that Section 230 of the 1996 Communications Decency Act would not apply in this case. Section 230 is a controversial provision. For internet freedom advocates, it is one of the most important things in the history of the internet and has been a key piece of why the internet has flourished in such an open and diverse way. Section 230 effectively says that platforms can't be held liable for the things that users on those platforms do. Democrat Senator Richard Blumenthal and Republican Josh Hawley have now introduced a no Section 230 immunity for AI act that basically has everything it does right there in the name. Over in the EU, the European Parliament has voted for the AI act. This includes things like prohibitions on live facial recognition software, a banning of biometric data scraping, and a review regime before major models are deployed. Now, we're going to dig deeper in today's main AI breakdown, but this is a huge deal. It represents one of the first, if not the first, comprehensive AI legislation from a global power, and so is likely to have meaningful influence on other regulatory regimes around the world. Bringing it back to the realm of the commercial, Google has announced another slew of AI features. Some of these are for advertising, shopping, and commerce. One, for example, is a more sophisticated ad placement tool that allows Google advertisers to automatically have their content placed where it's most likely to drive impact. And virtual try-on is a new way for people to customize how different clothing would look on models of all sorts of various sizes, skin tones, and with different hair types. Google also announced an update for its lens feature, which can help identify skin, lip, nail, and hair conditions. Google says that this is not meant to replace medical diagnosis, but given that the company receives over 10 billion searches annually for skin conditions, this could be something useful for helping people at least understand what they might be working with. In the research realm, NVIDIA has shared a new text-guided image editing tool. This allows users to take a source image, in the case that we're looking at here, a horse in a field, and then customize it using natural language. So for example, taking that horse and placing it as a pink toy horse on the beach or as a bronze horse in a museum. This continues the trend of more pinpoint image generation and image modification tools that we're seeing pop up basically everywhere. Now, when it comes to the efficacy of AI generated content, an interesting update on that front. To understand better how generative AI might impact the fundraising process for businesses, Clarify Capital compared a slate of successful human-created pitch decks, i.e. companies' decks that had already secured funding, against GPT-4-generated pitch decks. They asked 250 investors and 250 business owners to rate these decks without knowing that AI was involved. Overall, those investors and business owners found that GPT-4-generated decks are two times more convincing than those that are made by people. Those same investors and business owners were three times as likely to want to invest after reading a GPT-4 pitch deck than after reading a human deck. Of the decks created by GPT-4, 77% were rated as high or very high quality, while only 26% of human-created decks were rated at that same level. Still, while these changes show just how much generative AI is working its way into the normal business flow, there are rumblings that we might have jumped the shark when it comes to funding hype. This week, France's Mistral AI announced that they had raised $113 million at a $260 million valuation. Now, what made this notable, aside from the massive dilution that the company was taking, is that this company is only four weeks old. It is currently pre-product. 
Now, the team does have deep experience in this space, including alums from DeepMind and Meta, and they're playing in the lightning hot area of enterprise AI development. Still, anytime people see nine-figure funding rounds for companies that don't have products yet and only just started, it gives them tremors of bubbles past. Finally, one of the more wild stories from this week is that for the past few days, an AI Jesus has been giving advice on a 24-7 Twitch stream. Basically, this is a chatbot version of Jesus created by the Singularity Group that answers basically any type of question users throw at it, from breakup advice to game tips. Now this year we've also seen other types of AI generated entertainment, such as the Seinfeld parody show. However, that hasn't always gone well. Twitch, for example, temporarily banned that Seinfeld show after it started making transphobic remarks. And at the time of recording, this Twitch stream had been taken down for violation of Twitch's terms of service. If nothing else is clear that the world is going to get weirder, not normaler. Anyways, that is it for this AI Breakdown Brief. If you're enjoying this, please like, subscribe, and share, and I will be back soon for the main AI Breakdown.